Vaccine. The very name raises the spirit. But the science behind it has a lot of layers to it. So in this episode of Shareable Science Beyond the Blog, let's dig a little bit deeper into the different types of vaccines and some of the top candidates. Welcome to Shareable Science. Science you can share. So, as we get started, buckle your safety belt. We got a lot of science that we're going to cover in a relatively short period of time. Vaccines. The goal of a vaccine is to introduce some part of the virus into the body in order to train the immune system to recognize the virus and prepare a set of defenses that protect against disease when exposed. So the goal is to get some bit of the virus into the body so the immune system goes, I haven't seen that before, builds up an immune response in preparation so that if the person is actually infected later, the immune system, system says, I see you, I remember you, and can quickly mount a response and shut the infection down. There are more than 160 potential candidates in our pipelines for vaccine development. 160, that is spectacular. And 27 of them are already being tested in humans in clinical trials, also spectacular. Broadly speaking, they break down into five key categories about how they're developed and what their ultimate function is. And we're gonna cover each of those five. The first is whole virus vaccine. This is the traditional way that vaccines have been made for decades. And it, introduces, it involves introducing a weakened version of the virus or a completely inactivated version of the virus in order to mount a response. And the weakened version is the way that the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine is created. And a dead virus is what happens when you have um, a vaccine for hepatitis A. So there are 17 candidates under this category. Um, four of them are in clinical trials, and two of them have actually progressed all the way to phase three. Remember, phase three is the broadest category. You're looking at thousands or tens of thousands of individuals. If you want to remind yourself of kind of the format and the flow of the clinical trial process, take a look at our April 6th video, and that'll refresh your memory. Okay, the second category is actually using existing vaccines and repurposing them. And we talked about this um, in the May 13th Beyond the Blog video. So this is the BGC vaccine that is used in many parts of the world for tuberculosis. And intriguingly, there are hints that this vaccine actually provide, provides broad immunity against other infectious agents, potentially SARS-CoV-2. So that's also in phase three trial in Australia right now. Okay, category three. Category three and category four are designed to get a piece of the genetic instructions from the SARS-CoV-2 virus into our cells so that our cells take that bit of instruction, read it, make one of the virus's proteins and sit it on the outside of our cells. And our immune system sees this viral protein on the outside of our cell and says, I've not seen that before, that seems strange, and builds an immune response against it. So the goal of category three and four is to find the best way to get a piece of the SARS-CoV-2 virus into our cells. Category three uses a completely different virus, often an adenovirus, which is a common cold virus, as the way to infect the cell and get that bit of DNA in. There's a couple different categories of the type of virus that you can use. We're not gonna differentiate between those for this discussion, but I will note that there are several 18 candidates here and 23 candidates in these categories, and there are four that are currently in clinical trials. And the one that you may have heard the most about is a collaboration between Oxford University and AstraZeneca Pharmaceutical. And that um, clinical trial, that, that vaccine candidate, has already made it through phase one and two and is now getting ready to move into phase three, into a broader um, set of individuals to be tested. There are also three other candidates that are in clinical trials, one from China, one from the United States, and one from Russia. So stay tuned, there'll be a lot more data coming out of this category. The fourth candidate 
also is trying to get genetic information into the cell, but instead of using a virus, they're just directly injecting the genetic information, either in the form of a circular piece of DNA called a plasmid, or they're using a piece of RNA and they're covering it with fat to get it into the cell. So that's the difference between the DNA-based and the RNA-based genetic vaccines. 16 candidates in the DNA-based, four already in clinical trials. 27 candidates in the RNA-based and six in clinical trials, including one that you've probably heard a lot, of, a lot about. That's the Moderna messenger RNA or mRNA candidate. That, that vaccine has gone through phase one, has wrapped up phase two, and this week started phase three clinical trials. That's 30,000 individuals that will be enrolled as volunteers across the United States to look at this phase three candidate. Another candidate that's also in clinical trials is called BioNTech and a collaboration with Pfizer and Fosun Pharma. Um, that one also has reported out their first set of data by press release. And they actually have recently received federal funding to actually help move their clinical trial process forward and an early stage commitment for 100 million doses. Now, federal dollars are being provided in many of these different uh, categories and many of these different vaccine creators, in part to help reduce the significant financial risk that a company may take on only to discover that their, their vaccine doesn't make it through clinical trials, or to ensure that there is a potential stockpile of vaccines available for distribution if they do make it through the clinical trial process. Okay, our last category, we're in the home stretch, guys, is a protein-based vaccine, and that's exactly what it sounds like. I'm not giving an entire vaccine. I'm not giving a piece of DNA or RNA. I'm actually injecting bits of protein, and they are those proteins that you would find in a virus. I'm injecting them into cells to create that immune response. I could inject individual proteins, or I could inject what are called virus-like particles, which is essentially a shell of all the proteins in SARS-CoV-2, but it has no genetic material, so it can't actually replicate and, and um, infect the cells. But either way, I'm injecting either bits of protein, like the spike protein, or the larger shell. 63 candidates in this category, plus another 15 in the virus-like shell. This is a really popular approach that a lot of different groups are looking at. And several of these are in clinical trials already, including one from Novavax, which actually has found a way to stick lots of viral proteins on microscopic particles to then get them into the cell. They also have received a $1.6 billion government contract to help them move through their process of, of testing. So, Lots of different approaches when you are designing a vaccine. Again, you don't want everybody following the same approach. You don't want to put all your eggs into one basket. You want multiple different pathways, and that's exactly what we're seeing. This continues to be a rapidly moving arena with more and more results being reported out all the time. So stay tuned for additional details that will come out in the weeks ahead. If you find this useful, please share this with those around you. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next Shareable Science Beyond the Blog. Take care.